In today's video, we have a couple of surprises. Not only do we have an ongoing snowfall event that is coming to an end, but we also see a much more major and potent snow system potentially down the road that we need to discuss today. Alongside Arctic air that is really going to anchor itself here in the eastern states here later on in March. Surprisingly, really honestly, because we were heading into a warmer pattern. We've been in a warmer pattern. But winter is not ready to be done, so we'll see what comes of it. Let's just dive into things, and as I was saying, I mean, we have this current snow system that is coming to an end, a much more minor version of what we're potentially talking about for later on in just a few days. <clears throat> Let's just take a look here at Monday on the 11th, and things are getting quieter and warmer in the east. Uh, we've been discussing this for a while now, and even in the beginning of this video, things are looking warmer overall for the previous week or two. Not only that, the expected short-term upcoming pattern, but we do have colder air potentially on the way. Uh, we see a lot of this is caused by some of this troughing that is trying to develop out west and also the storminess. This is forcing all of that warm air to basically be shoved eastward. Let's take a look here at Tuesday, which will be March 12th, and we see much more deepened and consistent precipitation happening across the northwest. Rainfall in the lower elevations and the coastal areas. Primarily snowfall in the higher elevation areas. Let's just move on here. Let's take a look at the day on Wednesday, March 13th. And we do see a low finally developing near Kansas that's going to be a 995 millibar low pressure center. And we see lots of moderate to heavy snowfall throughout the Rockies here. Uh, basically from Oregon and Nevada, take it eastward towards Idaho and Montana, down through Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and even New Mexico. Definitely a multi-state uh, multi snowfall event there. And by the time it reached Thursday, this is when it's game on for severe weather. The low has weakened, but it is there. Uh, we see a bit of a cold front forming, a warm front definitely forming out here to the east. And we would be watching primarily this area here, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas and Louisiana for severe weather, mostly seeing showery and heavier rainfall activity to the north here for states like Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan there, and still dealing with some moderate to heavy snowfall in the four corner states. So a very impactful system despite it not being a very, very strong low. By the time we're reaching Friday on March 15th, we have 1,005 millibar low pressure center here, stretching impacts from the deep south and Gulf states all the way up into the mid-Atlantic and northeast there. Thunderstorms are certainly going to be a possibility, especially south of that low, so we're going to be watching for some severe weather implications, although it doesn't appear to be too major at this point. Saturday the 16th is a big date because this is when we're really beginning to see this Arctic air getting charged up and advancing into the eastern states. A lot of this can be thanked by this positive PNA out west that stands for Pacific North American Oscillation. All that means is that there is warmer temperatures out west. When this happens, and especially when it serves, sur uh, surges northward here in Canada, we see a lot of the cold that would be located over these areas basically redistributed there to the east. And sure enough, we're seeing that, and this is really moving in in a hurry. Here's Sunday on the 17th, and we have a lot of energy down here on the southern quadrant there of that trough. We even have some snowfall here for some of the Rockies. Thunderstorm activity along the Gulf states, and all of this is going to come together and produce a massive snowstorm for late March here. So let's watch it play out. By Monday afternoon, we have a very, very classic setup. We have a diving trough with lots of cold air and energy to go around. We have a lot of Gulf moisture being squeezed into all of this. And overall, this leads to a lot of storminess and a lot of cold nearby. And as we watch closely, it's going to advance northward. And by the time we're reaching about 7, 8 a.m., perhaps Eastern time, we see a low near the Smoky Mountains. Snowfall beginning for the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic here, already with moderate to heavy snowfall. And this thing only gets worse. By time we're approaching Wednesday, March 20th, we have a strengthening low over the Delmarva. Heavy, heavy snowfall stretching far down the Appalachian Mountain Range and even impacting lower elevation and coastal areas, which is very surprising. Throughout Ohio, eastern Kentucky, portions of West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, and now even stretching into New England, we're dealing with a massive snowstorm there. 
And even by the time we're reaching Wednesday morning on the 20th, we see this is a absolute blockbuster snowstorm. 976 millibar low pressure center right by Cape Cod there in Massachusetts. And we're dealing with extremely heavy snowfall throughout the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast here. Also, I mean, look at the whole pattern. I mean, a really strong ridge here over the West and tons of cold air pouring all the way down to the Gulf states. This would potentially be a historic late March cool down. This is on the extreme side of things as far as the cold and the snow are concerned here. So definitely take it with a grain of salt. It is on the longer range end of things. However, as you know on the channel, we treat everything as a possibility because that is what it is, a possibility. So we're going to be tracking this over the coming days and even weeks as we approach this system. Now, the GFS American model, let's just roll through it and we do get these kind of severe storms to the south. Here's the 18th, 19th. We definitely have the cold in the ridge out west. Look at this massive ridge here causing warm temperatures to surge. We have the Arctic air pouring into the east. So we definitely get a big fat check mark there as far as the agreement between the GFS and the European model is concerned. But by the time we're reaching Wednesday, there is no storm to be found. And we don't really get one until Friday, Saturday time frame. When we do have a stronger low near North Carolina, also a stronger low in the Great Lakes. And what ends up happening is this storm develops a nice cold front, warm front dynamic, and it really shields the east from any snowfall as this area is now in the warm quadrant on this model. So really we would need to get rid of this low, have this as the only low, and have the cold air along the coast to see anything similar to the European model here. But I will tell you up front, we are very far off from agreement here as far as the storm is concerned. The only thing we're seeing great agreement on is that there will be cold in the long range. Both models are now showing that, but the storm has a long way to go before we see any sort of agreement here on these models. We see that come to an end. We stay in the cold pattern overall, but we do not connect on any sort of major blockbuster snowstorm like we saw on that European model. Total precipitation, we see a lot for the Northwest still, but it is decreasing, I will say. Day by day, we're seeing a little bit less out there. Uh, for the Gulf states and up the East Coast, we do see a ton of activity. Multiple severe weather events here across the deeper south, multiple coastal storms impacting the mid-Atlantic and northeast, and this brings us to above average precipitation overall. Total snowfall on the European model. Let's focus on the west so far. I mean, we're going to dive into the elephant in the room here in a second, but we see very, very large amounts out west, of course, as there is numerous storms still to come. And with those higher elevation, Rocky, Sierra Nevada, and, and Cascade Mountains, uh, we're dealing with areas that are going to continue to see snowfall for at least another month so they're nowhere near their you know wintertime thaw where we're going to start warming up into the spring not even close i do want to zoom into the northeast here however uh, we do have a massive blockbuster snowstorm showing up on this particular model and we see 10 inch plus amounts throughout portions of the ohio valley here like ohio uh, the mid-atlantic like west virginia pennsylvania and maryland here and then also for almost the entirety of New York State, the entirety of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, most of Massachusetts and some of Connecticut there, we are dealing with 10 to 15, maybe even 20 inches of snowfall if you're in the bullseye. Again, I urge you to take this with a grain of salt as this is on the longer range side of things like I mentioned, but it is certainly a possibility and something that models have been hinting at. This isn't just out of nowhere. Uh, models have been hinting at some major connections on big snowstorms here uh, for about a week or more. Uh, and sure enough, we're just seeing a really, really legitimate shot show up on the European model here. Typically, you expect to see the American GFS model pop up with something random. But no, the European model this time around uh, is eyeballing something which definitely gives it a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more legitimacy in my mind just because it is the European model versus the GFS model, which if you don't know, the European model is a little bit more accurate historically than the GFS model. Not as much as some people try to make it seem, uh, but it definitely is the most accurate model uh, to date on the planet. Obviously, I expect big developments over the coming years for uh, AI models and all sorts of stuff, but for now and for the past 10, 20 years, European model has reigned king. Now, that's not to say that it's correct every time, and that certainly uh, couldn't even be, that's not even close. Uh, none of these models are really uh, completely accurate, if that makes sense. They're more just uh, something that we use as guidance. We have to use discernment and watch every single model run and see how these trends develop. 
And there is times where the GFS model is correct, and maybe it is this time, and the European model is kind of off the rails here with this idea of a major snowstorm. Regardless, we will keep you guys up to date. We will track it very, very closely uh, and continue to keep an eye on it for you guys. Now, on the GFS model out west, we see large amounts. For the upper Midwest and into the Great Lakes, we see large amounts. The Northeast, however, although this is decent amounts for this time of year, it is a little bit underwhelming compared to the European model, of course. We still, even on this model, expect 10 inches plus for some of the Appalachian mountain range. Don't know why my pen just got so big. Let's try to fix that there. Perfect. Some of the Appalachian mountain range in here, also kind of west of those Finger Lakes. For the, for the Adirondacks and Catskills there, the Green Mountains of Vermont, and even into the Berkshires of Massachusetts there, and then the White Mountains northward through the rest of Maine there. We are seeing 10 inch plus amounts for some of these mountain ranges, but certainly not widespread throughout the lower elevation areas on this particular model. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I promise you we will keep you guys up to date with all of these recent developments. I also would like to announce for those of you that are still watching the video that very, very soon we're going to be starting to talk about the upcoming hurricane season, which I expect could rival some of the most active seasons of all time. It could take that crown, honestly. We have the perfect storm of ingredients for this hurricane season. We have a developing La Nina historically warm Atlantic conditions, and really, I mean, I can obviously look at examples outside of those two things, but that is like 90% of the equation right there is the sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic, and then if we're in the La Nina or El Nino. Both of those are pointing towards worst case scenario, and I expect this to be a hyperactive hurricane season along the lines of what we saw in 2020. I believe that is the correct hurricane season where we saw record activity. I expect similar things this season, and obviously that's a bold statement, but ask anybody in the weather community, and this isn't really a far-fetched idea whatsoever. So I am looking forward to talking about that with you guys coming up soon within the next couple of weeks. Be sure to subscribe for those things and also more daily videos just like today's. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.